So let's follow our outline and code the delete event. First, we need to validate the input. And the input in this case is just a name. That could be any string the user enters into the name text box. So I'm going to capture that string into a variable and I'm going to trim it so there are no leading or trailing spaces. So I'll create a variable, I'll call it name, and I'll capture the input from the txt name.text, but I'm going to trim the spaces if there are any. And now I'll just check if the name is empty. And if it is, I'll display an error message and return from the method. So I will do an if statement and check if the name equals an empty string. And if that's the case, I'll display a message box. And here I will simply say, please enter passenger's name. The title of the message box could be invalid input and we can display an OK button and the error icon. And since this is invalid input, we simply need to return from the method and do nothing else until the user fixes the input. So if the user did enter anything in the text box, that is going to be the name of the passenger that we search for. So we can create a passenger object with the name that was entered into the text box. So we'll create a passenger, a new instance of a passenger, and pass the name into it. Remember, we have a method called getPassengersByName, which returns all the passengers that match the search string. So we can use this method and assign the result of the search to a list variable. Let me just uh, get this if statement. Actually, let me just get the comment here because this comment belongs to here. This is after the input is already valid. The if statement simply checks or validates the name. Just so no one is confused when you are reviewing the code. All right, so let's create a variable for the list and I'll call it found passengers. And I will call the passenger dot get passengers by name method, like I said, and we will pass the name that we are searching for. And if there are multiple names, they are being now stored in the found passengers list. So how do we know if no passenger was found that matches the name that was entered? Well, simple, we count the found passengers list. So we'll use the count method of the list in our if statement. We'll do an if the found passengers count equals zero, meaning no passenger with that name was found. Then we'll simply display a message box telling the user that the passenger doesn't exist. So I'm just gonna copy this, including the return statement, because once we display the message box, we don't wanna do anything else. And here I'm going to say, passenger and I'll concatenate the name so the user knows what name does not exist. We will concatenate the whole message like that, does not exist. And we can keep it as invalid input with the button of OK and error for the icon. All right, so if the passenger does exist, then we open the lookups form and display all the found passengers. And since we are in the delete event, we want to set the view mode to delete. So we create an instance of the form. So it's going to be passengers lookups, I'll call it form, and create new instance, and pass the view mode. And in this case, it's going to be delete. And of course we need to display the form, so I will use form.showDialog method. Now the user now has two options, either click on the name in the data grid view or cancel the operation. If the operation is canceled, the property is operation canceled will be set to true. And if that's the case, we don't want to do anything and just return. 
So under this comment, it's going to be if, and we'll check if the form dot is operation canceled. If this is true, then we will return and do nothing else. But if the user clicked on the name, we now need to capture the passenger that the user clicked. We did the binding to the passenger object in the lookups form, so here we can simply assign the passenger to our passenger object. So our passenger will now equal the passenger from the form, so from the lookups form, form dot passenger. And we can populate the seating information on the form too, just so we know we indeed have the correct passenger. So our name text box will hold the passenger name, the seating for the for the row dot text will equal the seat row for the passenger, so passenger dot seat row, but we need to convert it to string because by default it's an integer. And finally the column text will equal the passenger dot seat column. And next we ask the user to confirm the deletion. We simply display a message box with yes and no buttons and assign the result to a variable, just like we did before in other methods. In fact, I'm going to actually copy this and paste it over here. So it will ask the user delete passenger and the operation is delete and again that's gonna be yes or no button and we can leave it as information for the icon. Actually let's make it exclamation because this is a deletion. And if the user clicks no we do nothing but if the user clicks yes we go ahead and delete the passenger. So we will do an if statement and check if the message equals yes from the dialog result. And if that's the case, then we delete the passenger from the list. So we'll do passengers dot and call the remove passenger method from the passenger class and pass the passenger object to it. That's the passenger we are deleting. Now after we delete the passenger, if the plane was full, now there is one empty seat that belonged to the deleted passenger. And if there are any passengers on the waiting list, we can now assign the first passenger to that seat. So here we are going to check if there are any passengers on the waiting list and if the plane was actually full. So to check that, we will simply call the number of seated passengers and number of waiting passengers methods in our if statement. So if the passenger dot number of seated passengers now equals 39, because remember if the plane was full there were 40 passengers but we just deleted one so there would be one empty seat. And if there are any passengers on the waiting, seat, waiting list, so if there are passenger dot number of waiting passengers and if that is simply greater than zero so there's at least one passenger and I need parentheses here because we are calling a method so if this is true if there is only one seat available and any passenger is waiting then we can now assign that passenger from the waiting list to that seat that is empty. Now remember our list has all the passengers both seated and waiting. So to find the first passenger on the waiting list we use find index method applied to the list of all passengers. So I'm going to create a variable I'll call it index because I'm going to find the index of the first passenger on the waiting list. So our passengers list dot find index and we'll use the lambda expression to find the passengers on the waiting list or the first one on the waiting list. And to do that we'll simply check 
for the passenger or the first passenger that has the is on waiting list property set to true. So if the passenger goes into p dot is on waiting list and it equals true, that is the first passenger that we are looking for. That's the one that we will now move to the seat that was just freed from the passenger that we deleted. So the passenger on the waiting list was found and now we can assign the seat to him or her. The seat information is still on our form even though we deleted the original passenger. Remember here we added the name and seat information to our text boxes. So we can use that information because that is the seat that was just freed. So in our if statement I'm simply going to assign that information to our passenger. And the which passenger? Well, the one with the index that we just found. So passengers with the index that we just found and we assign the seed row to be the mtb dot c not column but row dot text but this is a string we need to convert it to an integer so do convert that to int32 and we'll assign the seat column as well so passenger passengers sorry for them the list with the index and we are assigning the seat column and that will be the mtb seat column text but we also now since this passenger has a valid seat assigned to him we need to remove him or her from the waiting list and to remove passenger from the waiting list we can simply set the is on waiting list property to false so our passengers with the index that is on waiting list now equal to false it used to be true because the passenger was on waiting list now it's false because he is no longer on waiting list so now after that we can inform the user of the deletion and that we moved the passenger from the waiting list so i'm going to display and construct a message box so it's a message box that show and i'm going to say something like passenger with the name was removed from the list and on the new line so i will also add environment dot new line i will also add after that that a new passenger was moved from the waiting list to the seat and display the seed information as well so again this will simply say that the passenger with the name and actually we don't want the name the name itself let me just see here we assign the name to the text box but after that we click a passenger from the list box and assign possibly a different name to it so instead of a name i'm going to take the txt name dot text string directly from the text box so this passenger was removed from the list and on the new line we will add the passenger name that was moved from the waiting list to seed number that is the row and column so that's the information and we can add the title of the message box and it can simply say something like passengers removed or just moved from the waiting list and we need only two bu one button that is OK. So message box button is that OK. And finally, the message box icon can be simply information. So this is our complete message box that informs the user of the whole operation. And finally, we need to clear the form and update the seeding chart. Take the comment and after the if statement, we will clear the form so we will call the clear form method and we will update the seeding chart by calling the populate airplane method and this is it let's just build it to make sure it builds that we did not miss anything and what i'm missing in the populate airplane 
over here and miss parentheses in our if statement. So let's build it again and the project builds. So this is it. We are finished and we are ready to test our application.